a new generation of leaders committed to saving the planet. All this can be recycled. Everything in this nature should be recycled and uh, it is a closed loop. Inspired by the urgency and magnitude of the problem, more than 96% of the total land area of Bangkok is going to be below the level. Confronting the changes in climate patterns. Adjusting to surroundings that are sinking. We have to be more flexible and endure the uncertainty and try to survive and keep our, our city afloat. Young people dedicated to making a difference. Why we call it green? Because you don't generate any greenhouse gases or carbon dioxide while you generate electricity from this. Before is too late. Zero hour, climate change in Southeast Asia. Next. Around the world, there are already people who are suffering from the preliminary effects of climate change, whose homes are swept away by rising sea levels. These people don't have the privilege of forgetting about climate change because it affects them every day of their lives. What saddens me the most is that these people barely contribute any carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, and yet they are the ones that are paying the biggest price. Our generation of young people needs to start taking responsibility of the world it will soon inherit and make sure that the generations to come have a safe world to live in. Bangkok on a weekday morning. Southeast Asia's economic powerhouse hums with people on the move. Off the main streets, residents across this low-lying city of 10 million have long relied on waterways to travel from place to place, conduct business, and drain seasonal rains. Once called the Venice of the East, Bangkok's canals remain an enduring symbol of the city, but today, many of them are paved over. Extreme rainfall caused by global warming is flooding the Thai capital with greater frequency and severity than ever before. And as the city continues to prosper, pressure from overdevelopment is causing it to sink more each year, putting the future of Bangkok and many of those who call it home in jeopardy. ก็ผมก็เกิดที่เนี่ยคือจําความได้ก็ก็เห็นน้ําแล้วล่ะเพราะเราอยู่กับน้ําน้ําเห็นน้ําคลองน่ะเห็นแม่น้ําเติบโต
้ระดับมันก็ต่ำคือพวกนี้ต้องต้องทำต้องทำทุกต้องทำคือทำตามแนวของของรอบนอกใช่ใช่ไม่งั้นถ้าถ้าน้ำมาเนี่ยไม่เหลือดูแนวระดับก็ได้มันไม่มีแนวระดับเลยเนี่ยก็แสดงว่าเวลาท่วมจริงๆมันมันล้นมันล้นฝนนักท่องเที่ยวและเธอสามีวีมอนซูนฟลอดส์ have been a part of life for as long as they can remember but in recent years they say the floods have gotten progressively worse อย่างตอนปี29ที่ว่าท่วมเนี่ยตอนนั้นเนี่ยถนนมาถึงถนนใหญ่เนี่ยประมาณแค่หลังเท้าแต่พอตอนปี54เนี่ยยังบอกเขาเลยบอกว่าโอ้ยสมัยนั้นปี29เนี่ยไม่มีประตูระบายน้ำยังแค่ข้อเท้าบอกเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวนี้ในซอยบ้านเรามีประตูระบายน้ำเยอะแยะเลยบอกไม่น่าท่วมผลปรากฏว่ามาเอวเลยเมื่อ2011ฝนท้องถิ่นที่ว่าท่วมมาเป็นเรื่องใหญ่บ้านก็ชั้นเดียวเนี่ยก็หมดแล้วก็ต้องมาอยู่ศูนย์อพยพเนี่ยที่นอนเรียบร้อยตู้ทีวียังเหลืออยู่ According to the World Bank 40% of Bangkok may be flooded each year by 2030 due to extreme rainfall and changes in weather patterns เราเป็นชุมชนที่อยู่กับน้ำเราเป็นเป็นประเทศที่อยู่กับน้ำเพราะนั้นเราไม่สามารถที่จะย้ายประเทศย้ายย้ายชุมชนเราไปไหนได้เราก็ต้องอยู่กับน้ำเพราะนั้นทันไงที่จะอยู่กับน้ำได้ It's a question that cities across the Asia Pacific region must find answers for and soon. Hypercrowded and often built in low-lying coastal areas, Asian cities are at the highest risk worldwide from rising sea levels and floods caused by extreme weather events linked to climate change. More than 96% of the total land area of Bangkok is going to be below the level if the the sea water could rise in relation to 10-year flood prediction by 2030. The economic loss of the impact causing by sea level rise and total flooding for Bangkok will be up to 500 billion US dollar and. More than 10 million people in Bangkok will be impacted if we if we continue to do as as we are doing today. One of the ironies is that the same economic opportunity that's driving migration and development to the capital is accelerating its problems. Some investor, especially real estate, who actually see any land in Bangkok can be developed. For uh, housing or condominium, so they they don't care much about the future climate change impact, which which is happening now. Even though Bangkok is thinking we we can develop, we can we can build a house, we can build condominium. बरसने लागी बादरियां, बरसने लागी, बरसने लागी, बरसने लागी, बरसने लागी, बरसने लागी बादरियां। There are many little things that makes you happy more than anything else. And that flower is one of it. So I love the flowers, the beauty of flower. I mean, I always feel jealous of it also. <laughs> also, then even I mean uh, things like uh, the 
smell of the soil after a rainy day, a you know, flying butterfly. You know, I love hearing to the birds. I see a life here. Yeah, that is what I love. Whenever I'm here, I'm, I am uh, with many uh, lives here. Like you know, I mean, um, we are not isolated from the Earth planet. You listen to your birds and all that. I feel the life is still there. Otherwise, I feel everything is dead. Giricha Kumar is pursuing her PhD at the Davicha Center for Climate Change at the Indian Institute of Science. My current project, I'm working on uh, reusing different uh, pre-sludge-based inputs in agriculture. Increased use of chemical fertilizers have actually added to the greenhouse gas emissions. Now, with our uh, project, what we are trying to see is, can we have an alternate to this chemical fertilizers? We had this issue of open defecations. We wanted to solve this issue. We have built our toilets. So now the issue is, uh, what do we do with this sludge that is generated from these pit latrines and septic tanks? Many farmers in the peri-urban areas have been using the fecus sludge for decades for application in agriculture. Because they know that these fecus sludge is rich in uh, nutrients. However, there are risks of application if we are applying directly. Because this will have uh, human pathogens, which will have a negative effect on the health also. And the other concern is, uh, if we are directly applying fecal sludge to farm plants, this fecal sludge will be rich in one of the major nutrients, which will actually lead to phytotoxicity. Hence, it is advised that before we apply to the farm land, it is safely treated and then safely applied to the farm land. <laughs> Here for this project, I am doing a field experiment where I will be using different fecal sludge based inputs. I uh, will be using co compost and I will also be comparing with other organic sources like the city compost form and manure, also with the chemical fertilizers. The main objective is to see how all these different nutrient sources will affect the soil and the crop in terms of uh, crop growth, development, yield and also soil in terms of nutrient uptake. So now if we have a set of uh, regulatory framework then it will give a market identity to our fecal sludge and then that will encourage the farmers to use. And through our scientific studies, if we can ensure safety in the final produce, consumers will also be willing to accept this produce. All this can be recycled. Everything in this nature should be recycled and uh, it is a closed loop. I mean, nothing should go out of this loop, if whether it is nutrients, in terms of human waste. I never thought that I would take this path uh, for my career, but the passion has become a career now, I would say. Yeah. I'm happy of doing whatever I'm doing. Everything is focused is what I would say. And also somewhere I also feel satisfied of uh, doing something and giving my little service to the nature. We are not saving it, uh, we are actually nature uh, saves us. Just 25 kilometers south of Bangkok, the impact of global warming is undeniable for people living in the coastal community of Bangkuntian. ปีที่แล้วยี่สิบปีที่แล้วเนี่ยเปิดกุ้งมาคือเราเป็นหมื่นสองหมื่นนะครับกุ้งธรรมชาติเขาไม่ต้องไปลงทุนไม่ต้อง
Suti Chongchurao is a third-generation fisherman. He says that once abundant shrimp stocks have plummeted due to higher salinity levels caused by rising water temperatures. Suti started farming blood cockles 10 years ago to compensate for diminished shrimp stocks. ลงทุนสมมุติลงทุนไม่แสนน่ะแล้วอย่างน้อยเราต้องได้กําไรละ 3-30 as changes in water temperature squeeze their livelihood, Suti and his neighbors must also contend with rapid erosion caused by rising seas. เดินเนาะฝ่าจะลุยไปถึงเห็นทะเลเห็นคลื่นเห็นอะไรในทะเลเนี่ยไกลครับไกลเลยเอามาสมัยนี้ไม่ต้องแล้วแค่เดินไป
Tapi tidak disangka kalau itu bahwa air itu akan seperti besar seperti ini. Tidak disangka sepertinya tidak, tidak seperti biasa seperti ini. Tapi pas kejadian itu sangat luar biasa. Jadi seolah-olah ada kaget warga juga. Ternyata air itu langsung wah gede banget gitu ibaratnya sehingga mobil itu terbawa arus. The plastic pollution crisis that overwhelms the oceans is also a growing threat to the Earth's climate. Musim hujan sering banjir, tak? Jadi kalau saya merawatnya, wah tangan juga saya sampai gatal gatal, sampai flu. Ada juga sering rusak. The Sitaram River is surrounded by 2,000 textile factories that provide jobs but also pollute. 18 tahun saya bidang di sampah ini punya anak tiga. Semuanya bisa kuliah. Yang satu S3, yang dua S2 ada di Untad, yang satu ada S1 ada di Stik Mojokerto. Semua itu hasil jeripaya dari pembolong sampah. Mountains of plastic and styrofoam add to what is already an environmental disaster. Bagi warga sini makan sampah ini harta karun, harta karun. Soalnya apa? Pagi dijemur, sore di anu sudah cari uang. The government is now stepping in, with the goal of making the river water drinkable by 2025. Sebab warga saya ini 900 kaka yang menimpati sampah ini 600 kaka. Bisa tolong jangan sampai nanti dikelola satu apa ya satu satu perusahaan yang mengelola khusus sampah ini dimusnahkan sebab sampah ini bagi warga saya sangat menguntungkan dan untuk menambahi perekonomian warga saya. An estimated 80% of the garbage from Bali ends up in the ocean. Diver Rich Horner uploaded this video to raise awareness. When we pulled into the bay on the boat, you know, I was there to hopefully film the manta rays, and you could see this massive slick, much bigger than anyone had seen before. And so I jumped in, and I knew that I had to film it, because I've got friends that are doing research on the island, on the plastic problem and the microplastics, so I knew I had to film it. But when I was actually filming it, swimming through it, it was just, it's kind of sad. You know, you, you, you see this much plastic and you know that it's, it's not good and you know that it's going to be causing problems. Scientists turn to satellites to trace the rubbish and figure out how to tackle the problem. The most important from this is we're not just tagging the marine debris, we're also tagging uh, the marine mammals. So uh, we know when the mammals, uh, when the marine debris movement has inbound with the mammal uh, migrations. That's the most important. The team has deployed satellite beacons at river mouths all around Indonesia. Here, this is from the Indonesia uh, Jakarta coast. It's already enough here. Is uh, the southern part of the Colombo here, there. So we still don't know where this is end up. So we still uh, to, to, to know and to learn uh, the movements. 
Scientists believe by following the waste movement, they can better understand the extent of the problem and how best to collect the garbage based on seasonal wind patterns and water currents. Most of them, 90% of them, are actually beach uh, on the Javanese coast here, okay? And only those, that one actually went to, the, uh, to, that, to that direction. So it seems to say that only 10% of the marine debris from that river are going to the Indian Ocean, okay? Um, at, that, at that time of the season. Data collected by the beacons is transmitted hourly to a satellite that pings it over to Indonesia's Maritime Affairs Ministry. Better understanding where those plastics are, are beaching or going, it's, it's going to help them a lot on prioritizing their action. Uh, for instance, if they have to purchase um, a dam at the river, so we know which river is a very high priority in terms of environmental impact, in terms of uh, biodiversity impact, uh, and, and where to put the money first, I would like to say. Today, there are an estimated 150 million tons of plastic circulating in the world's oceans, with more being dumped every minute. Some of the, of the ones that we have released six months ago are still, are still drifting. Unfortunately, I would like to say, because it means that they are still at the ocean, and most probably it means that most of those marine debris uh, will, will reach all the, uh, uh, the big uh, accumulation of plastic that we are all aware of, either at the Indian Ocean Indian or Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean. Bangkok sits in the heart of the Chao Preya River Delta. Caught between intensifying floods from rainfall and advancing seas, it's among the world's fastest sinking cities. Some neighborhoods have already slipped below sea level. Authorities working to save the metropolis face unique challenges. Right now, there's a lot of change, like shock and stress. So the globalization, climate change and uh, urbanization. Supachai Tantakon is the Chief Resilience Officer for the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, the government agency that manages the capital. Bangkok is really flat. We don't have slope, so every, every flow we have to use a pipe because when it rains, the water just stay there. It won't go anywhere, so you have to use a pump, pump it out. The pipe run to the canal, and we pump from the canal to the river because the water in the river is very high, so we have to close the gate. Every time we have to close the gate, and we use the pump, pump water from the canal to the river. And when we manage, we have to predict, forecast, okay, it's going to be rain, then we have to dry the canal to, to prepare some storage for the water from the rain. So this is the original plan of the Bangkok to protect. Taking that concept to new heights is landscape architect Kochakorn Vorakum. Her pioneering projects throughout Bangkok are designed to mitigate the effects of climate change on the city. Bangkok is a flat city and it's so hard for us to hold the water, right? It's a land that's flat so the water can go through and when the water moves it creates so much canal. So we are dealing with a flat land. In the heart of Bangkok, Kocharkorn designed a trailblazing 11-acre park that can hold up to 1 million gallons of water, reducing the risk of flooding downtown. So the design of Shula Longkorn Centenary Park is tilting up the whole park and then restore all the runoff and the water at the end. So the end would have the retention pond. It's equipped with the green roof, the wetland that clean up the runoff and then store in the retention pond. When the retention pond was filled up, it actually can flood the park up. So it's actually designed to flood. It's not designed to dry. <laughs> and I just feel that this is such an amphibious way of living, of how Thai architecture or Thai landscape 
should be applied. We actually forget many of the traditional knowledge of how we used to live with seasonal change and live with water. So I just feel that as a designer, I want to shift that narrative. I want to shift that solution and perception. And it's not about try to make Bangkok like in the past, like what we call Venice of the East. It's not about that, but it's actually about working to have the nature of Bangkok itself generate itself. Bangkok has been called Asia's least green city. As overdevelopment causes it to sink ever deeper, air pollution fuels climate change further, creating a dangerous cycle. And I actually was born and raised here in this city. And I remember very clearly that Bangkok used to be more green, more open space. After 30 plus years of urbanization, I think it's, it's become definitely more concrete, more buildings, more people. But I just feel that nowadays, being a child in the city is a little more difficult. Many of them living in the condominiums and more in the buildings and being deprived from, from the landscape of Bangkok. In the absence of free space, Kochakorn has found unorthodox ways to reintroduce nature into Bangkok. At Tamasat University, she's created Asia's largest rooftop farm. The 7,000 square meter space mimics rice terraces and helps curb the impact of climate change. As the great flood in 2011, when it's kind of called me out as a person, as a landscape architect, to really focus my life and my professional path to fix or to tackle this problem. And I feel that it's a time that we need to kind of reclaim that ability back and reclaim that in not just the mindset, but um, reclaim that into our infrastructure. I know that we have built something in such a wrong direction, but please don't continue. Please integrate the flexibility, the resiliency that this infrastructure is based on understanding the change rather than based on fear of getting wet. One of Kochakorn's biggest projects to date is a redesign of Lumpini Park Bangkok's first public park. It could soon become the largest water sponge in the capital, helping to ease flooding. You can consider Rumpini, it is as important as the Central Park for New York, the High Park for London. Rumpini is the first public park for Thai people. And this big piece of green space in the middle of city need to to fix itself or need to revitalize its, its own ecological health. Rumpini should be a public park that reflects how we are, how Bangkok is and was a city of water, the city of canal. I am from a city called Kolkata in India, which is right now threatened by sea level rise. That's why the issue is so close to my heart. Anasuya Gangopadhyay is a student at the Devecha Center for Climate Change at the Indian Institute of Science. So both my parents are science teachers. They are travelers also, they, they, they like love to travel. So at a very young age, I was exposed to both this science as well as nature. 
and so the idea occurred to me that why don't I save nature using science. I thought as an electrical engineer, maybe my contribution to it can be in this form, like working on renewables, trying to make renewables more viable or maybe making it easy to integrate large grid connected renewable sources. The advantage of wind energy is it is green. If you talk about disadvantage, wind is dependent on weather. So when the wind doesn't blow, you don't generate. In this project, we have two perspectives. The first one is the smoothing or variability management. Generally speaking, if the wind plants are located far away from each other. This is called geographical smoothing. So this is well known. But what is our new novel contribution to it? In India, we see very strong diurnal cycles. That means uh, the cycle of wind, how it varies, like the maxima it reaches, the low it goes. This varies from place to place. So when we decide new plants, like we know that in India, a lot of new wind plants are going to come up. So while deciding about the sites, if we look for this criteria also, it can help you smoothen the generation. Another aspect is the drought management. This means when you don't generate any electricity from wind for a long period of time. So once we go for this decarbonization and we have a lot of wind in our grid, if they totally stop, then we are going to get into trouble. To estimate this drought, we use a model called IMAGE, which is developed by Imperial College. We found from the output that in Rajasthan, when you have these droughts, you don't have in South India. So these two regions are high wind potential areas in India. And uh, we can see that they are complementary almost to each other in this perspective of drought. So there is a need for strong grid interconnection between these two. We started simulating wind plants as per our thing and we tried to compare the geographical smoothing with our proposal. We saw that there is an improvement of 10% when we simulate 10 wind plants. Renewable is the solution, it is going to be the future and only one type of renewable like solar cannot sustain because solar generation you get only during the day while wind you get throughout the day at different places at different time. So we need both of them and sometimes they are complementary to some extent to each other. So that's why we need a portfolio, a bag of renewables if you say like all sort of things together. So wind is having a bright future I think. Climate change is not something which is a scientific finding anymore. It is real, it is happening, our planet is warming up and there is no planet B. What are the symptoms, like what are the impacts we can see right now in India is the heat waves during the summer. We already saw that in Southeast Asia, these uh, heat waves and these short span heavy rainfall events they are going to go up. Another thing is with the glaciers. The Himalayan glaciers are going to melt and the runoff in these rivers are going to increase uh, up to 2050 and then they are going to decline. Another aspect is the sea level rise. In Indian coast, it is going to be more compared to other regions of the world. That's why I'm really concerned about this climate change. My message to the younger generation would be to come and join the effort, which is like all over the world, people are trying to mitigate this climate change. Come and join it. And as I said, yes, uh, the planet is warming up and we don't have any planet B. We have to act right now.
Bangkok authorities are also betting on green solutions to mitigate the impact of climate change on the coastline. In Bangkuntian, the BMA has launched a program to replant mangrove forests with the target of restoring almost 65 hectares of coastline. A lot of land uh, in Bangkuntian have been diminished because of the climate change and the rising of the sea level, but we're trying to use the nature approach to help them for example, mangrove forests, we have been planted more than 200 or 300,000 um, uh, mangrove forests, and we're trying to prevent this kind of coercion from the, from the ocean too. We're trying to help the nursery mangrove uh, forest. That is the important of the bamboo uh, fence. All the projects that we are doing in, in a bank and chain district is a natural approach. Um, many of the cities in, in, in Thailand have been used a new infrastructure approach, for example, building dam, which is not working. But our approach uh, using a mangrove forest, using a, a natural uh, defense, is working too. But in Bangkutian, local fishermen believe the nature based solutions are less effective. อ๋อเก่าค่อยลองไปทําแล้วให้เลยไปประมาณข้างละ 3-400 มันจะผุกระดองคอระหว่างน้ํากับโดนน้ํากับไม่ไม่โดนน้ําเนี่ยมันก็จะขาดตรงนั้นพอขาดเข้ามาเนี่ยมันจะเข้ามาในวังของช
มันคล้องอ่ะดีนะคล้องเนี่ยคล้องกลับไปต่อวิ่งไปไปดูดำดำมากเนี่ยมันถึงของของเราไม่ดำเนี่ยบางทีมันก็มีพวกสารใช่ไหมสารใหญ่พวกคายาพวกเนี่ยเนี่ยมันปรับปนมามันก็ไหลไม่จะไปไหลไปแล้วมันก็ลงทะเลพอลงทะเลจะปั๊บปุ้งหอยปูปลามันก็ก็หนีละเนี่ยพราลงไปไหนกันไม่ได้เนี่ยทะเลเรารับอย่างเดียว Man-made pollution is exacerbating the impact of climate change from coastal areas to central Bangkok. แต่ขยานนี่เป็นตัวป่วนเป็นตัวไม่ได้นะเป็นตัวที่หนักมากอ่ะคือว่าเรามีเครื่องขังน้ำมีของอะไรมันมันมันระบายน้ำชาคือคือคือขยานเนี่ยมันมันมันมันติดอยู่แล้วมันติดอ่าสมมติว่าไอ้ที่ผมทำคอบตักดักขยะไว้เนี่ยซึ่งไม่ให้มันไปลงอุโมงค์ยักษ์ซึ่งอุโมงค์ยักษ์เนี่ยจะต้องดูดน้ำเพื่อเอาไปลงอ่าคลองแสอ่าคลองคลองหลักคลองแสนแสบไปไปแสนแสบแล้วไปลงไอ้อะไรนะอุโมงค์ยักษ์ก็ได้ไปลงเจ้าพยาซึ่งเอาเอาเอาน้ำจากเนี้ยระบายแล้วขยะเนี่ยพอมันไปติดในอุโมงค์ยักษ์นี่นะมันก็จะทำงานลำบากทูมพิโอ leads a canal garbage disposal team for the Bangkok government. ผมทำมา20กว่าปีนะป้องกันน้ำท่วมคือก็ให้เราเก็บขยะให้เรียบร้อยปฏิบัติหน้าที่ได้ก็8โมงเช้าถึง14นาฬิกาเนี่ยแหละออก2รอบต่อวันวันหนึ่งนะได้ขยะเต็มลำเรือก็ลำหนึ่งก็ได้ประมาณตันตันครึ่งอะไรจับจับทางนู้นได้ไหมจับทางนู้นได้ไหมหนึ่งสองเอาเอาเอาคาดดิ้งไหมเอาพาดไว้ก่อนเอาพาดมามาค่อยงัดมาโอเคเยี่ยมมันก็จะมีขยะหลายๆอย่างถุงพลาสติกเอ้ยขวดมุ้งหมอนที่นอนมีพร้อมหมดนะครับของใช้ในครัวเรือนเนี่ยส่วนมากนะส่วนมากซึ่งคนอยู่ข้างคลองอ่ะเราไม่ได้ว่าคนข้างคลองนะมันจิตมันต้องมีจิตสำนึกของของของแต่ละบุคคลใช่ไหมแต่นี้ว่าพอพอขยะมันลงคลองเนี่ยมันก็ต้องเก็บอ่ะแต่ในคุณภาพนาทูพอนมีความจำเป็นที่ต้องให้ประชาชนมีความสามารถในการใช้ความสะอาดในการใช้ความสะอาดในการใช้ต้องต้องเพิ่มวิธีการทํางานเพิ่มเพิ่มเล็กน้อยอย่างที่ผมบอกก็คือว่าอย่างถ้ามีการอย่างชุมชนจันทรศิลป์หนึ่งอ่ะเป็นชุมชนที่มีคลองแล้วถ้าคุณเราหน่วยงานต้องขุดลอกคูคลองทุกทุกปีหรืออาจจะปีหนึ่งสองครั้งอะไรเงี้ยคุณต้องให้คนในชุมชนมีส่วนร่วมไม่ใช่ส่วนร่วมในการลอกนะฮะรับรู้รับรู้ว่าคุณเข้ามาทําอะไรแล้วคุณทําขนาดไหน But he agrees that responsibility Ultimately, lies with locals who are sabotaging their own environment. I think that if the c o m m u n i t ่ who are in a way that have a clog, have a way of water flowing, the first thing is the consciousness of the people in the community. You have to go down, go down, go down. That is why you are not a person who is doing harm to the people in the community. One drop of water is enough. นิดนึงนะครับเรายังไม่พร้อมนะครับสักห้าโมงร้อนใจเดียวนะครับวันนี้เราเมนูสี่ห้าเมนูเลยนะครับวันนี้ Not to Pon got more deeply involved in his community in the aftermath of the 2011 floods อยากจะช่วยอยากจะช่วยชาวบ้านผมเดินแจกข้าวทุกบ้านนะไปตั้งแต่ปากซอยไปถึงท้ายซอยตะโกนเรียกผมมาเป็นประธานชุมชนเนี่ยผมก็พยายามที่จะนําคนสองกลุ่มเนี้ยคนไม่มีเงินกับคนมีเงินเนี่ยสามารถจูนให้ติดกันจูนติดกันแบบไหนก็คือให้คนมีเงินเนี่ยคนที่มีฐานะเนี่ยช่วยเหลือคนที่ไม่มีนะครับคือเราไม่ได้เราไม่ได้ขอความช่วยเหลือจากทางราชการอย่างเดียวเราต้องพึ่งพาตัวเองด้วยผมผมบอกผมว่าพูดเข้าใจทุกคนนะฮะแต่ทําหรือไม่แค่นั้นเองเขาก็ฟังฟังแต่เขาเขาผมว่าถ้าคิดเป็นเปอร์เซ็นต์เนี่ยเฉพาะเฉพาะคนที่อยู่แนวริมคลองนะ
่ไม่น่าจะเกิน 50% ที่ฟังทุกอย่างที่เกี่ยวกับโลกร้อนน่ยมันเรื่องจริงหมดแต่ชาวบ้านน่ยส่วนใหญ่บางส่วนที่เขาคิดว่าไม่ใช่ทุร่าของเขาเนี่ยเขาอาจจะคิดว่าเป็นเรื่องไกลตัวเขาจริงๆไม่ไกลนะมันอยู่ในตัวเราแหละมันอยู่ติดกับตัวเราอยู่กับใกล้ตัวเราอยู่ในชีวิตของเราทุกวันน่ะเรื่องโลกร้อนเนี่ยเพราะนั้นผมถึงพูดถึงความร่วมมือทุกเรื่องที่ที่ทุกคนถ้าทุกคนร่วมมือทุกอย่างมันไปได้หมดนะถ้าสมกับประเทศไทยไปดูนี้อินเวสต์เยอะมากนะครับยูชมันนี่ที่ปกป้องแบงก์ของฟังซิงกิ้งในปีหน้าเท่านั้นเท่านั้นเท่านั
we need this kind of big solution to restore the system of the canal in Bangkok to become a public space, to become a space of life. It's not about turning everything into green, but it's about working well with the grey infrastructure that already exists and try to be resilient and survive. We have to be more flexible and endure the uncertainty and try to survive and keep our, our city afloat. As these projects progress, authorities in the capital are developing an early warning system to anticipate severe flooding and help people prepare for the worst. Ten years after the 2011 floods devastated central Bangkok, Notapon is bracing for the next crisis. เพราะเราเจอมาหลายครั้งแล้วเพราะการที่เราเจอบ่อยๆเจอทุกครั้งเจอซ้ําๆนะครับมันก็ทําให้เราที่อย่างที่บอกฮะเราก็เราเริ่